Trevor has called in. Hey, Trevor. Uh, good morning, Ben. Um, I've never had any faith in that minister from the very beginning, frankly, and I'm appalled to think he can swan off to the cricket when there are people like me out there. My loved one of 40 years is in a nursing home here. She's cooped up in the bedroom, cannot get out because she has now contracted the coronavirus. I mean, we put our loved ones in there to keep them safe. She has it. Thankfully, she doesn't have any symptoms, but she's cooped up in the room like some of the others. Can't get out. We're not allowed to see them. You know, when do we see these people? Uh, until they go into a coffin or what? Well, what's her name? Beverly. Beverly. When was the last time you had face-to-face contact? Oh, uh, before this lockdown, actually. Uh, it's been three weeks. Or not, uh, so we're not allowed to go in now. Not allowed to see her. Can only talk, talk on the phone. But uh, she was a brilliant artist then, and she's a, you know, she's only got the slight dimension currently. I mean, it will get worse, but you know, she's got no symptoms, thankfully, from the coronavirus. But she, she's cooped up in the room. She likes to walk around at least. She can't walk around. She's in the room. You know, what do these people do? How long are going to be like that? There's got to be something done about this situation. And Trevor, Beverly's dementia will only get worse if she doesn't have that interaction with you and others. Correct, correct. They must see their loved ones to remember that we're we're still here. And, um, you know, and the the health minister will tell you that too. And he'll also tell people that they're better in the open air if they can walk around in the garden outside. Take them outside, not walk around not just in in one room. I mean, it's a terrible situation. And I cry every day, Ben. You cry every day? I cry every day because I miss her so much. I love her dearly. We've had a wonderful life. There's only the two of us. We have no family. All my family are in Queensland and I can't get in to see her except talk to her on the phone. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking, Trevor? I'm 83. And you're crying every day because you don't have that contact with your wife. I cry every day, Ben. I cry every day because I know that as she gets worse, is less time I have to get to see her and to give her a hug and to see, you know, talk to her. Because thankfully she can still talk to me on the phone. She still knows it's me, but um, you know that as I said, that will get worse. But it's an appalling situation. And there are many people like me who can't see their loved ones at all. And how long do we have to wait? You know, until until they're gone or what? Beverly's lucky to have you, but she is unlucky to have a minister like Richard Colbeck who thinks it's a better use of his time to go off to the cricket instead of doing his job and dealing with the crisis in aged care as Omicron spreads around. I'm so sorry you're going through that, Trevor. Do you mind hanging on there so I can grab your number? Thank you. Good on you. Thank you so much. There's Trevor. 83, cries every day. And you can hear it in his voice, the pain, but also the love for Beverly. And the minister goes off to the cricket. Steve says Mr. Colbeck should have gone a long time ago. There are too many of these types in positions of power. My 90-year-old father has been locked in his room for the last three going on four weeks. It's a dreadful way for him to spend his final years. Meanwhile, my sister has been unable to see him in more than two years because she lives in Perth. Politicians have largely left a lot to be desired over the last couple of years.